Hello everybody. Um, in this video uh, we're going to be looking at begotten versus only begotten. And I'm speaking today about the eternal sonship of Christ. And a few years ago when I was making a lot of videos um, to take a stand for eternal sonship, um, there was a video that was put out by a certain person uh, that said Kevin Zacker rejects the KJB meaning of begotten. Well, that's a bald-faced lie uh, because I fully understand the word begotten. I know what begotten means. I have children. Um, when so-and-so begat so-and-so and then so-and-so begat another so-and-so, I know what that means. Um, but we're just not talking about anyone. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ is unique. There is none like him. He is the only one in all the universe, no matter how far you travel in the universe. There is no one like the eternal Son of God. Fully God, fully man. And Jesus Christ came to this earth, um, became the Son of Man, died on the cross, paid for the sins of the world, rose victoriously the third day. It was not the Father that died on the cross. It was not the Holy Spirit. It was Jesus, the Son of God. And people who deny His eternal Sonship, they deny the very person of Christ. And Paul talks about uh, this kind of person in Romans chapter 1. Read with me here in um, Romans chapter 1, and let's begin in verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now, these incarnational sonship people, they think they're pretty wise. They think they got it all figured out, but they ignore a lot of scripture. They do not compare a scripture with scripture. Um, they get their doctrine out of books. They do not get it from the book. But it says here, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Now, Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us, is the same yesterday and today and forever. The Bible informs us in Malachi, I am the Lord, I change not. So, by changing his eternal sonship into that of incarnational sonship, saying that he became the Son of God as his incarnation, they have now changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man. Because if Jesus was not eternally the Son of God, and he became the Son of God at his incarnation, then he became God. And therefore, he is a corruptible man. He would be no different than anyone else. And you've now destroyed the very nature of God himself. Now, people that um, try to take the definition of begotten and apply it to the Son of God in the same exact way are in fact doing the same mistake, error, and have the same problem that the modern versions do because the new modern versions will say something like, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son or his one and only son. The King James Bible says only begotten son. Okay, So by removing that, now they've made the truth of God into a lie because um, Jesus is not God's only son. Okay, He's his only begotten son. We've been adopted. Okay, um, We're joint heirs with Christ and adopted into God's family, Romans chapter 8. But only begotten, the, the problem is that people try to apply man's definitions to God and by falsely claiming that somehow I've rejected the King James Bible meaning of begotten, that's very deceitful because I do not deny um, the meaning of begotten. We're, when we're talking about people, begotten means that so-and-so has a child and then so-and-so has a child and so on and so forth. But we're talking about the eternal Son of God. There is none like Him. The, 
as being the only begotten Son of God, begotten in eternity past, okay? And because people don't have a big enough mind to think about this sort of thing, for Jesus to be begotten in eternity past can't mean that he had a beginning, because he has no beginning. He has always been the Son of God. The Father has always been the Father, the same with uh, the Holy Spirit. Um, so, when these people try to play these word games, they demote Christ. They bring Christ down to their level. And he is not, for he is far above them. Uh, look what the Bible tells us in... Um, Isaiah, Isaiah 55, okay, and even the Bible uses the phrase, the eternal spirit, so the Holy Spirit has always been the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has not changed, the Father has not changed, he has always been the Father, he is called the everlasting Father, and yet you will deny the Son, and this is the spirit of Antichrist, Isaiah 55, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So when, when these foolish teachers uh, who teach out of man's books and not the word of God try to compare a corruptible man to the uncorruptible God, they are foolish, they are wicked, they are unlearned. It is the spirit of Antichrist. And when you try to share the truth with them, um, it's not that they just scratch their heads and say, oh, well, I don't really understand. Um, I'll look into that. No, no, no. They blaspheme God and they mock you. Okay? They hate the truth because when you share the truth with them, they come against you. Uh, they blaspheme God by speaking those uh, things which are evil and wicked. And they are no better than the Pharisees of Jesus' day. Now, the Bible says here in 1 John um, chapter 4, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Now, who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ. Christ, okay? He is the anointed one, the Holy One of Israel, the Son of God. And when he claimed that, that the Father in heaven was his Father, uh, the Jews took up stones to stone him because they thought he blasphemed, okay? But <clears throat> it is the same bunch of people who would, at, out of one side of their mouth, will uh, criticize the Pharisees, but on the other side of the mouth, they agree with them by denying eternal sonship. <coughs> now, look in uh, verse um, verse 15 of chapter 4, 1 John. 1 John chapter 4, verse 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Now the incarnational sonship people would say, Aha! See there, I got you. Of course Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's not what you're teaching. You're teaching he became the Son of God. Is means just that. When we're talking about God, it's always the same. Because remember, I am the Lord, I change not. And remember... Um, Moses' encounter with God at the burning bush. I am that I am. The self-existing God. I am that I am. You see, is here, is that I am. That very I am who, who met with Moses at the burning bush. I am. Just like Jesus told the Pharisees, I tell you before Abraham was, I am. He didn't say, I became. He said, I am. So, the same way with um, Hebrews. Um, Hebrews. If I can find the verse, I hope I can here. Hebrews. 
But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. See? Eternal. Unchangeable. And if you say that Jesus became the Son of God, then what was he before? What was he before? For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God doesn't change. In every generation, he's a diligent rewarder of them that seek him. Now, people get hung up on the term only begotten. But I thank God for the King James Bible that presents it in such a way that we can understand that God can show us through Holy Scripture, through the teaching of the Holy Spirit, only begotten. To, to say that Jesus Christ is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, as the Bible says. Um, and John, let's go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And verse 14. And the Word was made flesh. Now here he is the Word, but he's also the Son. He has always been the Word. He's always been the Son. He's been both. God sent his Son into the world. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So now... To be eternally begotten of the Father, he eternally proceeds forth from the Father. Um, he is in the bosom of the Father. He declares the Father to us. Okay? Look in uh, um, Luke chapter 2. Let's look in Luke chapter 2 for a minute. Now remember, Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God who became the Son of Man. Okay? And those titles, by the way, are capitalized. When Jesus Christ is the Son of Man in Scripture, that's a capital S and a capital M. Everything's there for a reason, friends. Everything. Look in uh, Luke chapter 2 and verse 6. And so it was that while they were there... That is Joseph and Mary in Bethlehem. The days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son. So he came forth from Mary's womb. He, he was brought forth. Um, her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I always love that scripture. There was no room for them at the inn. Um, but that's a whole other topic. What I'm showing you here is, as the Son of Man, he was brought forth. He proceeded forth from Mary. As the Son of God, he proceeds forth from the Father. But for all of eternity, from all of eternity, He's in the bosom of the Father. He comes forth from the Father to declare the Father's word to us because he is the word of God. He speaks on behalf of the Father. All that the Father wants him to declare, he declares it to us. He reveals the Father to us. So to be eternally begotten, there never was a time that he was not. He has always been because to be eternally begotten in eternity, he always is. It wasn't that he was and now is, but he always is, eternally is the Son of God. Okay, declared with power. Now, these, these folks that teach incarnational sonship, they don't agree with the King James Bible. They should probably set it aside and get something uh, much closer to what they like. Um, just like a one uh, female teacher, who I'm not going to name, but you might know who she is, um, she uh, decided that Jesus um, was the Word who became the Son. And 
has now promoted incarnational sonship, but you know, don't want to divide over it because that might hurt donations. But nonetheless, um, this, this woman stated in her comments that she is not King James only. She's King James first. So that means, here's, I'm going to translate that for you. That means she'll go to the King James Bible first, and then if it says something that she doesn't agree with, she'll go on to another version, a perversion. Uh, for example, um, she was promoting the NIV's uh, version of Daniel 3.25, where um, Nebuchadnezzar says that the form of the so the form of the fourth man is like the son of God. Instead, it doesn't say that. The perversion says uh, like a son of the gods, a son of the gods. Um, so um, Jesus isn't really God. There, he has multiple fathers. Um, it's wickedness, and these folks that have itching ears, they always go back to the same thing. But they have the gospel right. No. There's always going to be something wrong with a gospel that has a false Jesus. Sometimes it might be a little harder to detect, but when you really look at them, what they teach, compare it to the Word of God, they have a false Jesus. And there's no point in giving these false teachers a pass. There's no point in just uh, standing back and saying, well, you know, let's just have uh, hold hands around the coom the 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 fire and sing kumbaya and just get along to get along. There's no point in making waves. Um, we can all just have brotherly love. Well, it doesn't work that way. It's not going to work that way someday before God's judgment. Um, these folks is in for a rude awakening. Okay? And when you go changing the word of God, you change the very nature of God. And these people really have a, a Jesus, a false Jesus, that's akin to the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses because um, the Mormons teach that, that Jesus was a spirit in heaven who got a body, was obedient to the Father, progressed to Godhood, and through his obedience became God, a God of his own world, so that there's many, many gods and, and that if uh, we all behave ourselves, then we can be gods too. Um, that's a lie. And then you have the Jehovah's Witnesses who uh, teach that Jesus is a created God, um, that he's a, a, the son of Jehovah, but not Jehovah, not God himself, but created. And that is really, uh, this incarnational sonship is just doing a fancy dance in between the both of those, okay? They're just dancing back and forth between them. Can't really choose either one, so they kind of smudge them together and, and make incarnational sonship. But nonetheless, these are lies from the devil. And I had hoped years ago that uh, when these lies were exposed from these people teaching these false things, that they would have been called out held accountable and said, look, you're either going to have to change your doctrine, you're going to have to, to own up to what the Bible really says, or we're going to depart. That's what I would have expected. Um, boy, was I wrong. Uh, that is something that I, I was really surprised, because some of those folks, I had known them for a while, conversed with them uh, via email and, and even on the phone, and thought, you know, well, once people see the truth of this, uh, they're going to be thankful because they're going to rejoice in the truth. Isn't that what Christians are supposed to do? Rejoice in the truth. And when that didn't happen, uh, I was very sad. But I'm not going to change my position because my position is right here in the Word of God. I'm standing on the Word of God. I will give an account of this position someday. And I am uh, quite okay with that. Because I know that Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God, and, and I, I also understand, and listen very carefully, I have met people who did not understand. They did not realize um, that there was a grave error in incarnational sonship. And the true saints who, upon co being confronted with the error, they repent. They change their mind and say, oh, yeah, that's wrong. And, and I've also dealt with people who who um, did not understand that, that 
the Old Testament sons of God, such as in uh, Genesis 6 and, and Job, uh, weren't angels but people. And that the whole Nephilim thing is a lie and these angels breeding with women to make um, half-breed Nephilim babies is, is wickedness and it's um, Gnostic. And whenever they've gone through the series that I put out, a couple of the series that I have on playlists, they're like, wow, I didn't realize this. But once again, when people are confronted with the truth, those who love the Lord, who hunger after truth and righteousness, they thirst after it, then um, they rejoice in the truth, just like the Bible says, just like John says in his letters. So, I just, uh, I was lied about in that, in that video. Kevin Zacher rejects the King James Bible meaning of begotten. No, I do not reject the meaning of begotten. I know full well what begotten means. I mean, I have children. I know how they got here. You know, I know how that transpired. So, we're not just talking about begotten. Okay, because we're talking about the only begotten Son of God. We're talking about Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth. Uh, the one true God who is above all. And to apply these ideas to God is wrong. And it is unbiblical because the Bible makes a distinction. Now, he, he does become the, the Son of Man. Just like I showed you there in Luke chapter 2, he was brought forth, okay? He came forth from Mary's womb. Well, he comes forth from the bosom of the Father to declare the Father to us. He is eternally begotten, and therein lies the comparison. He's brought forth. He's manifested. He's revealed to the world. But he was always the Son of God before he ever came into the world. He was already revealed in the Old Testament as the Son of God, all right? Just like it says in uh, Psalms. And these are not future ideas because they say, oh, well, that's a messianic uh, passage speaking of the future. That, that's just a prophecy. We're talking about God, unchangeable. He does not change. Okay, Malachi chapter 4. Um, Psalm get back to Psalm uh, Psalm chapter 2 kiss the son capital S kiss the son lest he be angry and he perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little now in order to get the twisted version of these perverted Bible haters out there, these hyper-dispensationalist Bible chopper-uppers, you're going to get something like, um, kiss the sun someday in the future, lest he be angry in the future, and he perish from the way, when his wrath is going to be kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him someday. But not right now, because, you know, he's not really the son yet. So all you Old Testament people, don't put your trust in him yet. Okay? Now, that is really what they're saying. Whether they like that or not, that is the idea that they're presenting. Okay? Because we're talking about the eternal son of God. And the psalmist, David, he knew the son. The, the Jews in the New Testament knew what it meant when Jesus uh, says he's the son of God. And they were going to pick up stones to stone him to death. And, of course, it was not his time, and they were not going to do that. But that's not the only place. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a matter be established. There's also Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 30. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended. Now, I want you to notice that this scripture is tied in with Ephesians, okay? And also it's tied in with Psalms. It's talking about 
um, Jesus Christ. And we're not going to go into all those, but you can look them up. Uh, we're talking about Psalms. We're talking about Ephesians. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? Okay, we're talking about Jesus Christ. We're talking about his Father. We're talking about God himself. God, who is the Trinity. One God revealed in three holy persons. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. What is his name, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? So, even in the Old Testament, they were quite aware of the triune God. And, of course, it goes all the way back to Genesis. Let us make man in our own image, and after our likeness. Okay? They knew that there was one God, and yet three holy divine persons. Because, what does it say in Deuteronomy chapter 6? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay, one God, three persons. They understood this. They understood that, that um, the Father is presented as the everlasting Father in the Old Testament. Folks, these Bible chopper-uppers, they hate the Word of God. And I understand that some people are going to cross, come across this video. They're going to be angry. They're going to be angry. They're going to give it a thumbs down. They're going to talk amongst themselves, do whatever they do, but the truth does not change. And Jesus Christ is the truth. He does not change. He is who he is. He said, I am that I am. And he does not change. And these people that seek to change the word of God, they are creating a God in their own mind, an image of corruptible man. So, <clears throat> And, of course, we have uh, the passage in, uh, in Daniel. Okay, you got Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, chapter 3. Now, this is the passage that a certain woman teacher, who also called herself an elder, um, <clears throat> doesn't like this version, so she switches it out for the NIV, the non-inspired version. Okay, so, and, and God chose to put this wisdom in the Word of God through the mouth of Nebuchadnezzar. It's Nebuchadnezzar speaking. But even though Nebuchadnezzar is saying the words, it's God. This is the Word of God. It comes from his mind. It's his words. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace. Okay, um, Back up a verse. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. It is the Son of God. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they couldn't have gone through that fiery furnace that slayed the bravest, toughest, strongest men in all of Nebuchadnezzar's army. Well, I tell you, it wasn't good to be the strongest and best and toughest in his army that day. Um, you'd probably want to be hanging out in the background somewhere and, and not look so tough. But the, the strongest men in the whole army cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego bound into the midst of the fire. But here they're loose, and he sees four. Now he sees four, not just three, but four. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. But now the new perversions will tell you a son of the gods. Which uh, these people that have itching ears, they go for that. That's the kind of thing they like. Uh, because they, they don't want to worship the true God and believe upon the true God. They want to worship a God of their own making. And in doing so, they violate the very first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. But uh, it's not a son of the gods. No, 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 no. It's the son of God. So, I know that people are going to believe what they want to believe. But you have to ask yourself a very important question. Do I accept what the word of God says? Or do I accept the words of a man who reads hours and hours out of a book and 
um, has no idea what they're talking about. And I'm not presenting to you my own opinions here. This is the word of God. Seek the scriptures, for in them do you think ye have eternal life, and they are they which speak of me. Okay, this is what Jesus Christ says to us. And two cannot walk together except they be agreed. And when people hear the truth, Christians will rejoice in the truth. They hunger for the truth and for righteousness. Okay, they love the truth. They're thirsty for the truth. And they will follow the true shepherd. Okay, because they know his voice. He's, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They don't follow another shepherd. They follow the true shepherd. And a Jesus that becomes the son of God at his incarnation is not the true shepherd of the sheep. So until next time, God bless you all and take care.